welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to overclock my Raspberry Pi 3 with its rather large heatsink. Overclocking is where you run a computer's processor faster than the manufacturer intended in order to boost performance. However, it can make the processor unstable, will produce excess heat and may destroy your computer. As of June 2016, overclocking is not officially supported for the Raspberry Pi 3 and will therefore void your warranty. Therefore, please don't try anything you see in this video on your own Raspberry Pi unless you're prepared to take that risk, unless you're prepared to actually risk destroying your lovely Raspberry Pi. Right, so here we are with the Raspberry Pi 3 all connected up all raring to go and probably shaking its little Raspberry Pi boots at the thought of being overclocked. Now as usual in these videos where I've been testing Raspberry Pi heat sinks and temperatures and things, I'm going to be running here in Raspbian and I want to get towards running this test script. You've sort of seen this script before if you've seen my previous Raspberry Pi temperature tests and heat sink and cooling videos, but basically what this does is to clear the screen. It then takes a measurement of the temperature of the Pi's processor it then runs this sysbench routine, which basically stretches out the processor, if I can actually show it there, there it is. It stretches out the processor to full capacity for about two minutes, takes another temperature measurement, etc. So I want to run this under different overclocking situations so we can see how hot the pie gets and also how stable it is. If you can survive running this test for about 10 minutes, then it's probably stable if it's overclock. If you're thinking to yourself, this is a rather messy piece of code, surely you could write it better than that. Well, you could. You could write the code with a loop in, which would look a bit like this. But either way, that's the code we're going to end up running. Something which will take temperature measurements and stress out the Pi's processor. So, just before we do that, and just before we actually do the overclock, I want to say a little bit about the speed of the Pi's processor. I've got a command here sitting in the terminal, which will tell us the current speed of the processor. So if I execute that, it'll show us the current speed of the processor is 600 megahertz. And you might be thinking, that's a bit strange because the Pi 3's processor is rated at 1.2 gigahertz. And it's therefore important to understand that the Pi doesn't automatically run at the full speed of the processor. It runs in different modes and only steps up to full speed if it actually needs that capacity. Now that of course matters with an overclock because we want to see the maximum speed it is actually running at. And there's various ways around this. One way is to try and set the mode of the Pi via a bit of code. We could do that. But because we're going to be running Sysbench later anyway to stress out the processor, I thought I'd show you by simply running Sysbench in another terminal up here. This is exactly the same command you've just seen in that script. If we run that, the practical implication is the Pi's processor will be stressed out to 100%. You can see that in the uh, readout up here. And if we then went back down to the first terminal, found the command from the uh, buffer, run that again, you'll see the Pi is now running at 1.2 gigahertz, 1200 megahertz. And we can prove that if we go back up here and we stop that, process utilization will drop down to uh, effectively zero. And if we then run this again, if we're back down here, um, it's what dropped down to 600 megahertz. So let's get on with actually overclocking the Pi. Now to do that, we need to change the Pi's config file. And there's lots of ways you can do that. And whatever way I use, some people say, why well, didn't you use another way? So I can't win. But anyway, I'm going to do it by typing sudo and idle to run the idle environment in, in a super user mode. You've got to run it in a super user mode if you're going to change the config file. So I'll run that. That'll bring up idle. It looks nice on screen, I think. I'm going to open up the config file. So I'll go up to the... Uh, boot uh, directory which is there in the root and I'll look at um, all files and open up config text. This is the file the Pi runs when you actually boot the thing up. Now, I'll just adjust it a bit so everyone can see it on screen in case things go off the edge. Now before we edit this file we should be sensible and get a copy of it so we can go back to that copy if our overclock goes wrong. So I'm going to go file and save as. Again there's loads of ways to make a copy. I'm simply going to do a save this as config.old and save and then save it again as config.text. So there's now config.text there and also config.old, which is a spare copy. 
Now, if we go down here, you'll see somewhere in this code, most of which is uh, actual comments, which are just been there to tell us what's going on. The, the hash sign says it's just a comment, only the things without the hash are actual um, code in the, in the config file. But if we go down here, you will see somewhere there is a comment about overclocking. And you can see that this comment and this code is, is going back to the early days of the Pi when the processor speed by default was 700 megahertz. So I'm going to leave the comments alone and I'm going to put in a command to do a fairly conservative overclock initially. I'm going to put arm frequency equals 1300, um, 1 1.3 gigahertz, and I will save this file and save. So that's all we need to do to get the Pi ready to be overclocked. That should work, we would hope. There are other settings you can change, but we shouldn't need them for now. So we'll close down all of this and we'll now reboot the Pi. There we are, and reboot, and OK. And here we are. By the magic of filmmaking, we've got back onto the desktop and we're now running an overclock Pi. This feels slightly exciting, doesn't it? This is now running in theory at 1.3 gigahertz. So we will first of all do what we just did previously. So let's see if we can find the uh, speed. Is it still in the buffer? Oh, it is. That will presumably show us, um, oh, it's now running at 1300. That's very good, isn't it? Wonder why it's gone straight to there. We can have a little look. Oh no, it's dropped down again. It must have been at 1300 after it had booted. It's now back to 600. But that proves we are going to be running at 1300 megahertz, 1 1.3 gigahertz. So things are working. So what I think we'll do is we'll now go and go to our, we'll run another terminal just so we can go back to that one if we need it. And we will do a directory there and we'll change to um, tests, which is where I've got the test scripts from earlier and directory that. And we're going to do, we're going to run um, test and SH, which is our test to take temperature measurements and stress out the processor. So if we run that, it'll start off. It's starting at what, 40.2 centigrade. This probably isn't an absolutely fair test because we didn't let it get completely cold having just run the uh, suspension command. But you can see it's up to 100% utilization. And if we just go back to this terminal here, we can again look at the frequency and it is running, yes, at 1300 megahertz. So it's running overclocked, doing a lot of stuff. So we want to see, will it survive running at that speed over about 10 minutes? And before some of you say, this won't be about 10 minutes, it won't because the pies are running faster, so the test will run faster, but at least it'll give us an idea about temperatures running as an overclock and whether the pie is stable. And uh, there we are, it's finished. We've got a set of temperature readings. I, of course, did a test of temperature readings before I started all this, and, and here they are, so we can compare that to the Pi running at 1.2 gigahertz. This is, of course, a completely unfair test because actually here we've got the Pi having been a little bit hot before it started. But the main thing is we can see that by the end of the period of time of this test, it was getting to a point where it wasn't going up too much. The fact we're running the Pi at a 53.7 at the end of that test, I think is a very good testament to the fact it is nice and stable overclocking and it's not running too hot. So, shall we go on and try and overclock it a little bit more? Why not? Let's do a pseudo idle again. I feel I'm on a roll here. Doesn't get too cocky when you're overclocking, but um, we can uh, try. We'll go back to boot config. And we'll, uh, there we are, just try and get this back on screen for you in case you're watching with overscan and things. And we'll go back down here and let's try and take it up a bit more. I'm going to try and take it to 1400. That's getting quite fast. That's as fast as most people I've found have reliably run the Pi 3. It is worth noting that not all Pi 3s are made equal. Some will go to a high speed, some won't. It just depends on how well the, the chips were cooked, if you like, in the factory. Now, to get up to that frequency, I'm going to guess it'll need a bit of a boost in its voltage. So what I'm going to do here an um, over voltage, and I'm going to give it a value of 4. What does that mean? Well, over vo voltage of 0 is the default. You don't have to tell it the default. That would be running the processor at 1.2 volts. Each level after that, we can go between 0 and 6. Each point you give it gives it another 0.025 volts. So effectively, 
over voltage equals four, we need to we're going to start growing the processor at 1.3 volts, not 1.2 volts. This is getting a little bit more risky, but it might get us this bigger increase in speed. So again, we will file and save. There we are. And we'll come out of all of this and close everything down like that and that and that and that. And we will see if we can reboot the Pi and if it'll come back running at 1.4 gigahertz. Do it all this live, see if this is actually going to work. And things are looking good. We've actually got the Pi booting. We don't know if it's going to be stable or what state it's going to be when it gets there. But now we've got the Pi running at that speed. If we go back to our um, terminal, let's look at the clock frequency. Uh, it's already dropped down after the, uh, the boot up. But never mind, we're not going to worry about that. Let's go back to another terminal. Yes, I should have let this thing cool down because my, my temperature tests here are only really about how hot it gets towards the end of its, of its cycle um, because clearly I should be letting it cool down for about an hour to do to a normal temperature, but room temperature, but I'm not. So anyway, we will go to tests. Well, I can't remember where things are it's because I'm a bit of an idiot really, but never mind. And we're going to run our uh, test. SH. Again, you have to really feel sorry for the Pi sitting there running now a lot faster over voltage will it survive this test. Let's give it a try. So it's now running, starting out at a 45.6 just because it hasn't cooled down. If we go back here and run that, it is now running, yes, at a 1.4 gigahertz and it seems it's stable. We will find out if it's stable after it's finished off this test here which of course is now taking 80% of 10 minutes, or roughly that, because it's running faster. So let's that run through. I'll look at it nervously as it runs, and we'll see what happens in a few minutes time. And there we are, it's finished. Even though I didn't let it really cool down, so it started at 45.6 degrees C, it's still not gone above 58 degrees centigrade, running with this overclock to 1.4 gigahertz. Admittedly, if I touch the top of the pie, then it's getting a bit hot on the heatsink there, as you might expect. But really, it does seem to be running in a very stable fashion. Now, I feel slightly bad that I didn't actually let it cool down first. So I want to run a final set of tests here. So what I'm going to do is to go back to the um, config file for a third time, if it runs up. And I'm going to bring up the uh, config file again. And I want to keep it at that speed. I'm not going to go above 1.4 gigahertz, because I don't think it would really work, but I also want to actually overclock the, uh, the GPU. You can overclock the GPU and the memory as well. I'm going to lose the memory where it is because I haven't got a heatsink on the memory, but I am going to do a uh, GPU frec, and I'm going to take that from its stock, which is uh, 400 megahertz, just to 450, just to give a, a little bit of an overclock on our GPU as well. So I will save that, file and um, save. There we are. So we're now ready to do our final overclock experiment. And I want to make sure I do it so we can do a really proper comparison with the uh, initial stock speed we started with. So I'll close these things down. I'm now going to actually close down the Pi and then I'm going to wait about an hour or so so it's absolutely back to its uh, co as cool as it can be so we can run a proper comparable test. So for now, I'll sign off by uh, shutting down the Pi. Right, so here I am back again. Everything is set up for my final test. So I'll uh, kick off the temperature test here in this terminal window. And uh, that's good Look, we're looking at an idle temperature, a starting temperature here of 34.9. That's up a few degrees from what we started on our 1.2 gigahertz pi, but I think that's perfectly reasonable given we're now running an overclocked system. And just to prove we are, we'll go back to another terminal and uh, look at that. Yes, we're definitely running at a 1.2. 0.4 gigahertz, I'll get rid of that. So we'll let this test run through to get some good comparable data between our 1.2 and 1.4 gigahertz Raspberry Pi 3. And there we are, it's finished. And we've got some, I think, good data there. It's only got up to a 54.8 degrees C. And if we compare that to the data from the 1.2 gigahertz Pi, we can see, well, it's, uh, it's a bit warmer, clearly, as we would expect, but it's still running at a not a bad temperature. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. 
Effectively, we've got our Raspberry Pi 3 now running with a faster processor, faster GPU as well, faster GPU and CPU. And if you think about it, we've got an extra 200 megahertz per processor core. So across the four processor cores, if the software could access them anyway, that's another 800 megahertz of processor power we've got available from this overclock. The equivalent of adding a whole Raspberry Pi 1 to our Raspberry Pi 3 in terms of available processor power, a bit, bit more than that. So overall, very pleased with this test. It's all worked very well. A great uh, example of what you can do with a large heat sink on your Pi, a little bit of a risk taking, and you can do a successful overclock. So there we have it. I've proved it's possible to overclock a Raspberry Pi 3 beyond its 1.2 GHz native speed up to 1.3 GHz and 1.4 GHz and it all continues to work absolutely fine. This said, do again heed my warning from the start of this video, do not try overclocking your Raspberry Pi unless you're prepared to void the warranty and to take the risk you might destroy it entirely. But now that's it for another video and I hope to talk to you again very soon.